Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, isn't that a beautiful city down there? That's New York, and this is The Ramble, and I'm Alex Bennett. Ladies and gentlemen, out on the West Coast, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Lawrence. Uh, Happy April. Happy April. Yes. Um, so, uh, did you do anything on April Fool to fool somebody? Uh, <laughs> I was actually returning from Southern California. So you didn't have time. Where, where I was in the wealthiest. Oh my God! What a Santa Barbara. Gee, the average price of a house there is two point two million. That's the average. Really? Yeah. It's. Uh, well, anyway, I uh, let's see. On April Fool, what did I do? I was doing my. Uh, my Monday show, and I said, Marjorie and I are announcing that we're getting divorced. And some people were stunned by the announcement, and then other people went, April Fool, and I went, you got yeah. it. You know, so. April. That's kind of the most, one of the more annoying days of the year, April Fool's Day. Well, you know what it is, though? You get caught on it sometimes because you forget that it's April Fool Day. Yeah. You know? Uh, and I, why why is it April Fool's? Why do why is it Happy October first, Oct, uh, October Fool Day? You know, no. And uh, I should know, but I don't even know how April Fool started. That's what we should start doing. We should tell somebody something, and they go, like, "Really? Is that true?" And you go, "November Fool, <laughs> November third <laughs> Fool." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never get to that. Anyway, so how are you doing? Uh, by the way, I was watching a, um, um, a sh- uh, what do you call it, Co- uh, comedy special on uh, Netflix with, uh, who's the comedian? I'm trying to remember now. My mind suddenly Dave, goes. Dave Attell. Dave Attell. And you're in the credits. Yes, I just got a bunch of emails and that came out last week and uh, he uh, he shot it here a year ago in San Francisco. Yeah. And uh, we, we did a little skit together and as we before we shot it, he said, this is too hot, it's probably not going to be shown, but he wanted to do it. And uh, it was, um, I don't know if it made national news, but somebody got in trouble out here, some store owner for he came out and turned a hose on a uh, homeless person. So, so what was we the bit? reenacted that. And you were the homeless person. No, Attell was. Oh, he's Attell sitting was. In front of, he's sitting in front of Cobbs, and I come out with a hose and just blast him. And it was just, then he starts. He starts. <laughs> he starts brushing his teeth and shampooing with them. Oh, that's funny. It's pretty funny, and he's. He said it was really. He said, "Gotta look great." But he said, "I'm almost sure they're not going to use it because it's people get too upset about it." Well, it sounds to me that it was hilarious. Which was, I hate to say this, better than the special. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I, pretty, I was uh, very. Di- you know, I I'm a big fan of David Tells. I have been ever since I hired him for one of our shows uh-huh. in San Francisco. I mean, I've always liked David Tell. Uh, but he just seemed to, it didn't seem it was all hitting on four cylinders or six, eight cylinders or whatever. You know, um, it, I turned it off after a while. It just wasn't all that funny. Really? Okay. But, but I did go to the very end and look at the credits, and there it was done at uh, Cobb's. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And uh, it. Uh, uh, it listed you, thanks to, and Larry Bubbles Brown. So I went. Yeah, that was nice. You know, because I always look at credits, especially for a show done in San Francisco. I don't know how many times I can see Jeff Wills' name, but, you know. Uh, Jeff Wills, powerful man. Yeah, yeah. I think he runs the comedy tours for Live Nation. Yeah, yep, yep. 
the hell you had on your Palace Fine Art Show on uh, New Year's Eve of 96. Well, actually, Will started taking over producing my shows, like at the mm-hmm. Palace of Fine Arts and so on, if I remember correctly. Uh, I mean, he, he, and did, Gary, yeah. he and Gary were dealing with each other. And um, we kind of came under the, the wing of Bill Graham Presents, uh, which was, you know, it was fine for me. You know, I didn't mind that at all. You know, big, powerful organization. But then that kind of ended or folded into what became Live Nation, and Jeff became a biggie there, you know. Yeah. Producing all their major comedy concerts. Uh, and yeah, he does still, all the big he, ones with Chappelle and all those things. He's still there to this day, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, a nice guy. I like dealing with him. A great guy, yeah. And uh, Yeah, but that was when I used to be a big shot. Yeah. Well, those were fun shows. Oh, we had a good time. I mean, it, it was, I was... was a thousand, a, thousand seater, which is nice. It's not too big. Yeah. But we did large venues. We, you know, we were probably the most successful producer of comedy events in San Francisco because there wasn't a single show over a period of about, I would say, eight years or something like that that didn't sell out. You know, we, every show Frost we did, it was a super, What? For us, including the, the Frost Amphitheater, 9,000 seats. People. 9,000 seats sold out. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we were probably the most successful producer in comedy in San Francisco. Yeah, uh, it was pretty amazing. And we weren't even in the comedy business, really. You know, I just did it as an offshoot from the radio show. I figured, oh, yeah, yeah they'll, the station will let me plug my events, so I'll do these comedy shows and make a little extra money. And before we knew it, we were the best, the most successful producer of comedy shows in San Francisco. So, what can you say? Those are the best, and you would uh, you would get a huge crowd for the at six in the morning for the live shows. Oh, those little live shows we did, yeah, yeah. Of course, those didn't make me any money, you know. They didn't make money, but they were great shows. Oh, they were terrific shows. So you know. Yeah. What can I say? Them, them's was the days, my friend. <laughs> you know. How's comedy doing in the Bay Area? Is it still drawing crowds? It's still around. It's just uh, there's not a lot of money in it unless you're a touring headliner. At, uh, yeah, the, clubs are paying, the clubs are paying the opening and middle acts the same as they were 40 years ago. Jeez so. almighty. I don't think any business has been that bad, but you know, I well, I mean, do they fill their houses? Okay. Uh, Cobbs and the Punchline does, yeah. Yeah, and uh, the trouble was, here's what happened in comedy, folks, which is interesting. What they started doing is all these clubs started passing out twofers, they called them. You know, two for the price of one. And so people would get two oh, for the, That's when the boom started to die in the early 90s. That's because when everybody was that. getting in for free. What a lousy uh-huh. audience, you know? Sure, you know, in comedy, you want people who paid to get in. Yeah, you give it away, you're going to get a shit crowd. So. You're going to get a shit crowd. They get a crowd that doesn't laugh. They fold their arms and go, make me laugh. Or but, they just start talking and don't care. They don't respect their shows. Oh, but if they spend something like 15, 20 bucks for a ticket, as they did with my shows, they wanted to be there. You know? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, but it was the twofers that killed comedy in San Francisco. They go, oh, uh, this look, this crowd got sold out. Yeah, everybody was in there on a free pass. They they let them in because they'd buy liquor and then they would charge them high prices for the booze, right? Yeah, two, overpriced drinks and, and then two, two drinks. And now you got a pissed off drunk crowd, so. like a four drink minimum. <laughs> Which, by the way, that should be against the law, don't you think? 
a two drink. I, yeah, four I drink. thought it, I thought it might have been. I looked it up. It's actually it's actually not. If you put in the if you make it very clear before someone buys a ticket that you have to buy two drinks, it's legal. I know it's legal, but here's what's but terrible. You're about. right. It shouldn't be. Why should I like? I don't drink. I just don't drink. So a true drink minimum, they're going to make a lot of money out of me because I'm ordering a Diet Coke. Well, those are now $5. So. Yeah, yeah. And what they used to do, what they used to do is if you ordered four, if you, if you came in and it was a four drink minimum and you ordered a Diet Coke, they put down four of them in front of you. In other words, really? immediately <laughs> right there and then. Well, take people who are going to a club and they drink four drinks, all right, and then they drive home because they're going to drive home. Shouldn't the club be responsible if they get into an accident? Uh, they could be, yeah. Aren't they complicit? Or overserved. Yeah. And, uh, I think they just should have just charged a decent amount for a ticket to get into a comedy club, and the drinks were reasonably priced if you wanted them, but you, you didn't wanna, have yeah. to have them, you know? I don't think any movie theaters make you buy popcorn, do they? Uh, no, but don't try to bring in your own popcorn. They will right. stop you at the door and confiscate your popcorn. <laughs> really, that's true. So if you want popcorn, you got to buy it inside the theater. That's wrong. I should be able to bring my own popcorn if I want to. Well Someone used to do a bit like in poor neighborhoods when you go to a movie theater. When the as soon as the movie starts, you can hear like fifty-eight soda cans popping open. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, uh, I'll tell you, uh, uh, there are a whole bunch of things that really are bothering me these days, like that where you have to do something, you have to buy four drinks at a club. Okay, That's, there's something wrong about that. How long have I been doing that? God, I think uh, ever since I was in San Francisco and going to comedy clubs, they were doing that. They had a drink minimum. Uh, it probably wasn't as high as it is now where they do the twofers and everybody's getting in for free and they want to make all the money they can off the drinks, the watered-down drinks, I might add. You know. Um, do you know how Larry Flint made his money initially before he started uh, Hustler? Do you remember these, these, you go to a bar and they would have a machine that would dispense the booze? No. Yeah. What happened was, is a lot of times, you know, in the old days, a bartender would sit there and he, he'd make you a drink and hey, if he liked you, pour in a little extra booze, right? Well, that would cost the, the, the bar owner money because every every ounce of booze that's in, in a glass is costing him money until you pay for it. So what uh, he came up with was this dispenser for booze that they could put in a bar. And so if a guy was going to make like, you know, whiskey, whiskey and something, he'd go over and pour the whiskey out of this automated machine that would give a specified amount. And then they'd add the water or whatever, the soda or whatever that went with the whiskey. Um, he made a fortune off of that. Really? Because, I yeah, never because knew that. bar owners were tired of losing money because their bartenders to, to get in with some woman who walked in the door or some customer and get a bigger tip or whatever, uh, uh, it kind of uh, gave them a little more booze than they were supposed to. So this stopped that. A little, he little made history. made a fortune off that. Wow. Yeah. And well, then he made a. What? He made a lot of money. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 He was a crafty hillbilly. He was on your show once. Oh, on my show a couple of times. You know. He had uh, that uh, gold-plated wheelchair. He had a gold plate. You remember the gold-plated wheelchair? Yeah. 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 Uh, he, um, yeah, he was an interesting guy. You know, I can't say one of my favorites. I always... Uh, kind of disliked him because Al Goldstein 
started Screw Magazine, and what he did with Hustler was just do a glossy version of the same thing and stole every one of Al's ideas. Really? Yeah, wow. and yet because he was successful, Al was always kissing up to him, and I'm going, Al, why are you doing that? The guy stole his whole act from you. You know? Uh, but I in later years, I worked for him. I used to write a column for Hustler every uh, every month for about five, six years, something like that. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He paid you well? Uh, initially, it was amazingly well. Initially, I would do 1,200 words, okay, and I'd, be, I'd get paid a dollar a word. Dude. I remember one time I wrote a whole uh, article for him on Air America that came out to 3,500 words. I got $3,500 for that. You know, so it paid That's really good. well, but then uh, I was told by Bruce David, who was my boss in that, and friend, that uh, they had changed the whole thing and they were only going to pay X number of dollars per month for my column. Okay? So really, I had to do about 1,200 words, but it paid less, like $900 or something like that. But that was when the magazine started hurting a little bit, and they had to pull the reins in, you know. But it, for a while there, I made a ton of money off a of hustler every year, you know. So, uh, who am I to complain? Uh, but anyway, so has work good for you? Um, and let me ask Work's you. Work's been good. Yeah, I had a couple of nice gigs this past weekend, and. Uh... You probably work fun. more consistently than any other comic I know. I mean, outside of the big headliner, you know? I, well, I only do like three or four gigs a month now, but they pay enough to pay the bills. So. Yeah, yeah. But And also, doesn't that feel better doing just three or four gigs a month? Oh, yeah. Having to go uh, out there and, you know, every weekend you're in another place doing two shows each Friday and Saturday that's, night. That's hard when you're young. I don't know. When guys get older, I don't know how they do that travel. That'll kill you. You could do it when you were young. Yeah. Yeah. I know guys that used to go on the road like for 40 weeks. They're just, oh my God. It was kind of like me with radio. I could do, I could literally do four hours a day, five days a week, which I was what we did in San Francisco, right? It was four hours? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, not go home and feel anything. Now, if I do an hour, I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> now, maybe I'm a little out of training. That could be it, you know. But, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 I'm, you're a working comic. You're, you're doing okay compared to most comics today. I don't know how somebody gets yeah it's hard it's a hard business to surviving as you get older for sure well i mean for instance if you had to go to somebody and somebody said larry i'm an up-and-coming comedian can you give me any advice on how to survive in this business could you do it uh, starting out now it would be you couldn't make any money that would be horrible i mean i think about when people tell me well where well, how uh, how can i get in the radio and I go, I don't, shit, I don't know. I, I could have told you the answer to that question 20 years ago, but I can't tell it to you now. I don't know how you get into radio any longer. To begin with, there aren't that many radio stations that are hiring performers. They're all using... No, like, didn't you... Uh, who did Live 105 hire? They heard they weren't paying them anything. But I don't know if they're paying they anybody person. because uh, the uh, the whole operation runs out of a broom closet because it's automated. You know now it's all pre-recorded. It, all pre-recorded. All the announcers are uh, what they call voice tracked, and it could be a guy, somebody from another market, not even San Francisco. It could be somebody who li works in another one of their markets. Oh, that's bad. And then. Uh, agrees that part of his job is to voice track for San Francisco or to voice track for two or three other cities. Lori Thompson, let me give you this as a good example. Lori Thompson, I went to work uh, for Ed Cramp over at Clear Channel for a very short time. And he loves to mention that whenever we, I had an interview with him the other day. We talk about the fact that he's the only guy who's ever fired me twice. 
you know, <laughs> uh, and I still talk to him. Uh, and um, he, um, um, he, she was working at Clear Channel, and she said that she went into Clear Channel. She did six hours on a weekend, two days a week, okay? But she wasn't required to go in on Sat Friday, Saturday and Sunday. She was required to voice track them. Okay, so she voice tracks them, and each of the voice track sessions takes up, say, six hours on the radio station on Saturday and Sunday. How much do you wow. think she made? Uh, it wouldn't be these days, not much. They didn't pay her for the six hours like they would have in the old days because you had to be there, right? Mm -hmm. They paid her for the time it took her to do the voice tracking, and they told her for each show, don't take more than an hour and a half to voice track. So she voice tracked two shows, total of three hours work, and got something like I don't know, less than a hundred dollars. Wow. That's what happened to radio. So yeah. when you folks out there in San Francisco are listening to the new Live One O five, you're probably hear you're hearing stuff that's voice track. The entire station is being run out of a broom closet essentially. I use that as a metaphor. Uh and uh you're not you know, they say, Oh gee, live one oh five is back. No, it's not. You know. Anything but live, yeah. Yeah, I mean, is Alex Bennett doing a morning show there? I don't think so. You know, not that if they offered to me now, I'd do it. You know, that was the appeal of radio, though. It was live; you're in the moment. You know. Well, yeah, but if, I probably wouldn't be able to be live. Oh, pre-record no. it. You know, I mean, and they they probably had me do it from here, you know, in this in New York. Yeah. It just it, it's just not what we did, you know. It's not what I knew as radio. I'm an old man. I'm old fashioned, and to me, radio is live and of the moment. Okay, and includes Larry Bubbles Brown as the traffic guy. And it'll never happen again. Yeah. God, how'd you become our traffic guy? That's what I'm trying to remember. Uh, Lisa Carr was quitting. Yeah. I came over to your house. I'd, ri I'd written a book, a, a parody of self-help books, and we were talking, and you brought it up about uh, Lisa Carr is quitting, and uh, you thought it'd be funny if I came in for a morning and tried it, and I did, and I got a really good response, and then... I think you said, let's go full time. Yeah, but you weren't hired by Live 105. That's what most people didn't realize. No, I was actually working for, uh, is it Metro? Metro Traffic, yeah. Metro Traffic, yeah. Who got paid by the station to supply the traffic reports. Yeah. Now, you didn't have to do them for any other radio station, though, right? No, I was the only one. Yes, you, you guys. Yeah. So anyway, so you... Uh, yeah, there are people that like do them for all the stations, which would be, go out of your mind doing that. Well, there were some other people, like Lisa Carr worked for them, and she did other stations as well, I believe. Yeah. Um, there was one guy, uh, one guy I'm trying to think of who also did it, and uh, did it for us for a short time. Yeah. But... Uh, we 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 you, I enjoyed having you doing traffic. It just well, it's fun. We uh, there, we just kind of made fun of the whole thing well, and had sound effects. And yeah. it, well, I mean, it changed the whole dynamic of how you listen to a morning radio show. Uh, oh, and now here's so and so with the traffic, and then it would always be the same thing, you know. And 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 then when I go to you, it wasn't the same thing. In fact, it was nowhere near the same thing. <laughs> I mean, how accurate were you, actually? I would get, uh, Metro told me to do at least the three top accidents that were going on. So I would do those and then yeah. add things like a woman stall on the Bay Bridge, park at whore. <laughs> park, you, you had park at whore t-shirts. 
Parker or t shirt. Parker or. Parker. I remember uh, remember we did those big live uh, the BFD shows at Shoreline mm-hmm. every year. Yeah. And uh, the, I forget the person promotions because I had to go out and introduce one of the acts and uh, which and she said don't say park at whore. Okay, so I did, and then, so I introduced the band, and they came out. And I think it was Green Day, and they they opened their set with Park at Whore. The <laughs> How did they know about that? They heard it, I guess. <laughs> oh well, anyway, we've run out of time here again. Reminiscing again, yeah. Too much fun between Larry. We're like two and old retired guys in front of the general store. Yeah, I remember the day when. <laughs> and we each have a dog sitting by his, our side. <laughs> Big hunting bird dog. Anyway, thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. His name is Larry Bubbles Brown, and uh, he is uh, one of my favorite people in the whole world. I mean, the guy is just genuinely a funny, funny human being, and one of the best comics working around today, and he's hired by a lot of comics to open up for him, because he he doesn't spoil the room, you know, he just wants to make people laugh, and he gets off and does his his little act, and it does 20 minutes, and then here now is... uh, uh, the headliner for tonight, and they don't feel that they have to top him or anything else. Not that he's bad, it's just that there. we always talked about these certain kind of comics who spoil the room. Like, you don't want somebody who plays a guitar and does song parodies before you go on. That kills the room. And uh, people who scream, comics who scream, that's why comics who scream usually just immediately become headliners because nobody wants to follow them. Not because they're good, but because they scream. So, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's what's going on there. Let's see here. We got some people waiting to come on. Just uh, it's about three of them right now. Shall I admit them all? Sure, why not? They were nice enough to call. And uh, what we'll do is uh, uh, Charlie Wallace... Uh, you know, we won't, and Jeff, we won't let, and Josh, we won't let anybody else on. Okay, how's that? Yeah. All right, you know. Were they bad? Uh, uh, what? Were they bad? What's back? I said, were they bad? Oh, they were bad? No, I said, we're not going to let anybody else on because they haven't called yet. Oh. Well, you know, well, okay. So let's see, let's see if now people call. Of course I'll take your call, you know. Uh, don't be silly. I'm desperate. Um, hi, Jeff. Hey, how are you doing? You still here in New York City? No, I'm at home in Connecticut. Are you really? Okay, I can't tell. It yeah. looks like looks like a hotel painting. <laughs> yeah. Did you steal one from the hotel and bring it back? Is that what that no. painting in back of you is? No. Yeah. No. Oh, look, there's the there's the boy. This is, this is a nice home you've got up there, you know. And did your wife have try and? Push the flowers into the picture or something. <laughs> the the vase. Anyway, uh, hello there, Charlie. How you doing? Your your audio isn't connected. It says Charlie Wallace is connecting to audio. Been that way. Wow. May need to call back. Wait a minute. I can I'll be, I can also send him a message. Oh, wait a minute. Did he do it? No? No? Let me see here. Let me send him a message here. Uh, bu- 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 uh, no, wait a minute. Where is I it? I assume he can hear us. Yeah, there's a thing here. He can't hear us. No, he's got to turn on his audio to hear hear us. Uh, let me see here if I've got something that I can... Can I send to him? What, where is it? There's a, usually a thing that I can do to... Uh, 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 can you hear us, Charlie? No, Charlie can't hear us, and I just have to find where's the where's the thing that says tell him to turn on his audio. Huh. Let me see if it's over here. That could be. Let me see here more. Okay, and what does it say here? Make a, allow multi pin remove put in waiting. Uh, 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 make uh, make co-host make host spotlight for everyone pin. 
stop, uh, let me see, and then chat. Hmm. hmm. That's interesting. Face. Well, I could chat and just send him a note and say, uh, let me see here, type a message, turn on your your audio. Oh, there he is. Okay, now, you, did you just see me typing that message to Charlie? Oh, no. Oh, okay. You you announced it on YouTube, I came over. <laughs> when I announced, oh, yeah, on, on YouTube, okay. Yeah, when you said, that, let's go get people, let the people in. Yeah, well, you didn't have your audio <laughs> on, so you couldn't hear I, us. I don't know what to have to do. It doesn't, it comes up mute for some reason. Yeah, well, I then you just, on it, just go over to, well, uh, let's see here. You go over to... Uh, gee, where do you do you go? I don't know. This whole thing just yeah. You're right. Well, let's let's find something. Turn mm -hmm. off. The mute. Sometimes the camera doesn't even come on. I have to turn the camera off. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Well, maybe we should find something else besides uh, 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 <laughs> uh, Zoom to use. Although Zoom has been pretty good to us, you know. It never really fails that much. No, you know, I have no so problem with it. I don't have any real problem with it either. But anyway, so how are you all you guys doing tonight? Uh, Brian, hello. Josh, hello. Charlie, hello. Jeff, hello. Uh, huh? I'm happy. You're happy? Yeah. Why are you happy? Well, I'm, it, there's no reason not to be happy. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly. I'm fairly happy. You know, uh, I'm happy. You know, I mean, I, I, I could, I could, I have stuff to complain about if you want me to complain about stuff, but you know, no thanks. We don't have that much time. <laughs> That's a kind of a uh, my format of my show is Alex complains. <laughs> you know, you know, when I was a complainer on radio and I was like <clears throat> 45, that was, you know, it was a good bit, but when you're 84. <laughs> They just say he's a grouchy old man. Mm. I'm not. I'm, I'm, tell me, Brian, you used to listen to me, right? You were grouchier back then. Was I was grouchier <laughs> back then? But that was your persona. Your persona was like that, you know. I was always complaining about something. When did yeah, I? When did I get my uh, my hypochondria? I don't know. I think I faded you out then. Mm. Anyway, <clears throat> I have a hard time talking tonight because I have little sores inside the inside of my lip, and I think I may have, I think I may have bitten it while I was asleep or something last night. But, mm. And I have a cut down here too, and I, I don't know what that is. Maybe Marjorie slugged me while I was asleep or something. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yes. She she doesn't want me to talk about certain things that we do. I can talk about if the if I do it, she doesn't mind that. But but if I talk about us doing it, I don't. She doesn't like snoring. It. No, she, don't do don't say that. I get in trouble now. See, I didn't say anything. See, so I mean, uh, I would tell you jokes about me snoring. The only problem is, I don't know how much I snore, and neither do any of us really. We have, have to be, for that. we have to be informed by the person we sleep with as to how much we snore. You know. They have an app for that, though. Huh? They have a They what? have an app called Shut Eye. And it's supposed to, like, record stuff. It's supposed to record what? Like, when you're snoring and all that stuff. I haven't I haven't used it yet. I'm going to be able to use it tonight. Really? <laughs> yeah. No, and you... Say snoring, uh... And then it has like background sort of music or noise for you to go to sleep easier. Does it, she says that if I talk about this, but I'm only talking about my snoring. I'm not talking about any. She didn't. She never. <clears throat> I'm not even going to talk about her. Okay, just about me. And that the fact that uh, you know, I don't know. Do you do you snore, Brian? I used to snore a lot, uh -huh. and then I don't snore as much now. But somebody else snores now. <laughs> but my question is, my question is, when when you did, used to snore, did she like push you or shove you or something? Yes, yeah. she rolled me over all the time. Well, here's what I think we all she do. Wanted to, she hit me with a pillow, I think, when it got really bad. Here's what we all do when somebody tells us that, you know. Mm -hmm. We go, what are you doing? You're snoring. No, I'm not. 
I don't know that I'm snoring. You know, I don't know that. But I, I'm not supposed to talk about snoring. Well, I can. I can I'm talk not snoring. About I'm... If it refers to me. Not, not if oh, it refers so to me. So just any. say, I'm sorry, you thought it was snoring. I was actually passing gas. <laughs> well, that's the other so thing I can't talk you about. Dream, you were dreaming about being a motorcycle. Yeah. Put, 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 yes. Yeah. Well, and, and you know what she what she threatened to me tonight. That's what she threatened to me. She said, "You ever talk about that about me? Okay, meaning her. I will never listen to your show again." And I started to think about it. She never listens to it anyway. It's not like she gets up in the morning and says, "You know, I didn't hear last night's show. I better listen to last night." She never listens to this show. The only show she listens to is the one she's on on Monday. And the other day, she j we started talking about a particular problem, and she uh, hung up. She got just dropped the call. She was very mad at me. So we know, huh? We know. But I have those problems. I have those problems. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk about my own problem that way. She's okay, but don't talk about me in any way like about that. That that's personal. And I'm thinking, what's personal about that? You consider that personal, you know? It's just this uh, little, little little problems we have as human beings, you know. I'm sure cavemen, way back when, used to snore, and you know, his wife would hit him with a club or something. I don't know, you know. But uh, anyway, so I can't. So what she, what she does? Huh? What she does? Oh yeah. She stays up until one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Watching her her dramas on her phone, and if she has the volume up and I fall asleep, <clears throat> then you know mm -hmm. a couple hours later it, I'm a little bit light sleeper, and she's listening to something, and you hear like all this somebody being attacked or something, and a couple times I've woken up to this fighting scene or something where people are going ah, ah and they're screaming and yelling and shooting and stuff, and it scares the hell out of me. Why? I don't understand that. Why? It, it, you have a TV set in the bedroom, don't you? No. No. Why not? That's the only place to watch TV, for crying out loud. <laughs> I know. I've always had a TV in my room. I, it just, yeah. We don't. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I just don't understand why people think they want to watch a movie or a TV show on that little screen that is a an iPhone. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't make yeah. sense to me. Yeah. That that's why I w I make sure I can watch I even if uh, something's only available for instance online, mm -hmm. I have a way of like showing it on the TV screen, because I don't want to you know I don't want to have to watch it like this you know yeah yeah it, it, it's it's uh, I, an iPad maybe okay oh yeah a, an iPad at least has a fairly large landscape but you know I can't see phones. Her latest thing is watching. She's hooked on Instagram. I hope I can talk about that. No, she's hooked on Instagram, and I mean, I I, I was uh, using TikTok for a while, and I can admit that it's it's addicting. But I don't watch TikTok much anymore because once you've seen eighty thousand cats, you know, licking their balls, that's about it. You know, there's nothing more to watch. So. But uh, she's she's very big on on uh, uh, Instagram, which I don't I don't understand any of those. You know, everybody says you really should do your show on TikTok, and I'm going no, 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 no. how I have no idea how you get this on TikTok. And I'll tell you what I hate about TikTok. This is why it should be made illegal. Okay, not because it's owned by the Chinese government. I don't care what information the Chinese get on me; they'll probably be disgusted. Okay. Uh, what bothers me about it is the fact that they shoot everything in portrait mode. They made that the order of the day, and that's not the way we see stuff. We see stuff in landscape. And so now everybody's shooting all their videos in portrait mode, and it's, it's ugly, it's horrible, it's disgusting. Am I complaining like an old man? Okay. No. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. By the way, um, um, we, were, we were talking to Larry Brown about his uh, doing traffic on my show, uh, and I don't. I, you know, he seems to remember how he came to came to pass that he was doing traffic on my show. 
Uh, mm. But I, uh, you know, I that was the best part of our show. You know, when he did the traffic, it was just incredible. But I thought about there was something that was kind of a mistake there that I couldn't remember. Oh well, forget it. I don't remember anything. Anyway, uh, how how is how is, how are you doing, uh, Josh? Anything that you listen to on the news that's bothering you, besides everything? Well, I'm doing doing good. Uh, news wise, you know, there's it's been a little flat. It's all pretty much repeated the same stuff for the last week it seems a lot of talk on the upcoming trials for Trump but nothing really developing I mean they're just repeating the same stuff over and over again they've gone you know news has been pretty heavy into this you know the this abortion thing the last few days and the Biden campaign seems to be you know, finally ready to kind of go at that pretty hard. Well, he's point. a little late to get on everything, isn't he? For a guy yeah. who's running for president? Yeah, I mean, but, you know, they're they're at least taking their chance now to kind of confront it and, and, you know, squarely put a lot of the responsibility on Trump, which is, you know, fair enough. I mean, it's good that they can go around now and, you know they're they're using some rhetoric that you know in in a decade ago or whatever I think we would consider, you know, something that they say on the campaign campaign trail, but it's it's pretty overblown. But you know in this case I don't think it's really overblown. I think that you know he's represented in the past uh, recently, you know, uh, some pretty strong stances on that, and he's been all over the place about it. He'll at the end of the day he'll do just about whatever. He thinks people want that particular minute. So, you know, them going around, them as in the Biden campaign, mm -hmm. uh, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, et cetera, telling people that, you know, voting for him, his reelection, you know, could very well bring something like that to an end all across the nation. Mm -hmm. It's fair enough. I mean, I don't really see it as fear mongering in this particular case. I mean, we hear a lot of. Yeah, but do you know you know you know you notice know. what Trump is doing to hedge on this deal? Is he's like going, well, we'll just leave it up to the states. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then yeah. every time a state passes a law, the last few days that's extreme, they go to him and they say, "Do you think they went too far?" And he says, "Oh yes, I you know basically leave it to the states, and then well, what about this state? Oh, I meant the other forty nine states. Well, what about? Oh, I meant the other forty eight <laughs> states. Oh, I meant the other forty seven states. I mean, you know." You know, she's going to try very, very hard to have it both ways, but that's not really possible in, you know, the abortion. You know, debate. what's interesting about this, this whole thing with Arizona is that this law, this anti-abortion this anti law, was done in, what, 1867, I think it is the year, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. What? 1864. 1864. Okay. No, something uh, like that. Yeah. Uh, has anybody mentioned that Arizona wasn't even a state, <laughs> and wouldn't be a state? It wouldn't be a state for another what seventy years or something, or fifty, uh, sixty 1912. years? Twelve, yeah, yeah. 19, was it nineteen twelve? I thought it was nineteen twelve. Nineteen twelve. So you know, I mean, at least fifty years. It, it, it was a territory up until then. Yep. So, could you make the argument that it wasn't a law that applied to Arizona, the state? Well, the Supreme Court already said it does, to Arizona Supreme Court. Well, the Arizona Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that a, a Supreme yeah, Court? I, I think you could make the argument. I mean, I don't know that it'll get anywhere because it's it's a state law, and their state Supreme Court has, you know, made their ruling, so that's basically done. You know, there's not— Yeah, but I mean, still, but they much. weren't a state when they made the law, and so therefore, does it apply to the state of Arizona? Well, in my particular feeling, I, I would say no, but their state Supreme Court said yes. Yeah. Well, this state you know, Supreme so, Court sucks, so let's... Uh... No disagreement, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, that's... But, you know, there's not much recourse around it uh, outside of the state, I guess, is my point, you know, because the Supreme Court has ruled previously that these things are basically now up to the states. Up to the so, states. 
given that the state of Arizona has decided this and their Supreme Court has affirmed it, that's pretty much, that's that basically in Arizona. What's going to change that is legislation in that state. You know, so um, regardless of what their Supreme Court says, that's, you know, the, the I don't want to say the, you know, the nice thing about it, but that's the, that's what can be positive about it is at the end of the day, again, in our system of power emanating from the people and a check and balance in each branch with the people always having their own check. If the people want to go around their, their Supreme Court, you know, they can, and they probably will, hopefully. Mm-hmm. You know, if the legislature, as it's constructed now, won't do it, then they vote some people out and put some people in. They can pass a law that says whatever, you know, they feel it needs to say about abortion, and then there's, you know, not diddly shit that their Supreme Court can do about it, basically. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's how that's how it got handled in Ohio, you know, for the most part here. And, and you know, that's a big Trump thing. So, I mean, I think that's why people think that this bodes very poorly for him because you know the state of ohio you look at you know for instance uh you know he's carried in the last two presidential elections decent margin you know certain counties uh very high and all that but you know when it came to abortion our legislature tried to take the power away from the people in that case they said nope not going to do it and then when it went as a ballot initiative it passed overwhelmingly you know, for for so uh, it is an issue I, your state cares about. Yeah, I mean, it. You know, the 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 point is that the representation of the vote did not in any way reflect Trump people or Biden people or anything like that. It cut across several different parties and and all that. So the point being, a Trump presidency threatening that. If they can make that case, mm-hmm. there are going to be some Trump supporters who probably will say, I can't do that, so I'm going to vote for Biden, or I'm just not going to vote, or I'm not going to vote for Trump. And as we've discussed before, not voting at all or not voting for Trump and voting for somebody else is almost as good as a vote for Biden, you know? And, and in a state like Ohio, it may not matter as much. He will probably still win the state, but this principle applies in places like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Virginia, North Carolina, Arizona, Georgia. I mean, if they just sway, in some of these states, if they just sway 2 or 3% yep. of the Republican electorate to not vote for Trump and do anything other than that, you know, well, I, not you know, I think what's, all, what's that's great, huge. What's greatly underestimated are the uh people uh who are republicans who really don't like trump yeah you know i mean the question is will they will they just stay home or which would help biden if they stayed home you know yeah, right. um i don't yeah, think that's probably better yeah i mean i've always believed i've always believed in not voting and here's here let me hear me out before charlie has gets apoplectic <laughs> I just think that if I don't like either candidate, so I don't vote, that's a form of voting because they're going to notice that a certain amount of people didn't vote. And why didn't they? Maybe they didn't because they didn't like what they saw. I mean, I don't Mm -hmm. know why I should have to go into a voting booth and vote for the lesser of two evils. You know, if you ask me, I know I don't want Trump for president, but quite frankly, Mm -hmm. I don't want Biden either. I think it's time for a little fresh blood in there, you know. I mean, I, you know, I'm all for Gavin Newsom, as you know. It's you your know. vote. I mean, you're yeah allowed to do what you well, want. Well, but I wish, you know, I wish when I went in on the ballot, it said no vote, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. That I didn't just have to leave it blank, but it just said no vote. Because yeah. then that would have to be reported. The, Biden so much, Trump so much, RFK Jr. Ugh, uh, so much. And then, oh, no votes. Oh, 15% voted no vote. Neither yeah. candidate. I don't like either either of them. If they had mm-hmm. that there, I'd vote. I'd go vote every single time. But what, what's your expectation? What, what do you think it's going to solve? What's it going to solve? 
it's going to be, a, you know, if the no votes outweigh any of the other votes, then they have to hold the election again. No, they don't. No, but yeah. they, they should. That, that's what I'm saying should be the law. The, in other words, n not being satisfied with either candidate should be a recordable vote, is what I'm saying. Okay, so I'm wrong, right, Charlie? Mm -hmm. I just said, you, you said it right there. You said you, you, you don't like Trump, you don't like Biden, but you like Biden a little more than you like Trump. Yeah, so well, I mean, why the would only you reason, take a chance on Trump winning? The only reason I would vote for Biden is to keep Trump from being president. That's the reason well, I would vote for That sounds like that, a good reason because no, Trump not, it's, ruined the country. But it's not a good reason. I should have the right to vote for somebody that I truly believe in. <laughs> right? What do and you, you do. It's just that person's well. not running for president. Yeah, that person's not on the ballot. <laughs> yeah, you know? right. Well, but all, all I'm saying is uh, so many times I've gone, who am I going to vote for? You know, well, I, look, I know who I'm going to vote for because I've always been a Democrat. My father was a Democrat. To honor him, I remain a Democrat. <clears throat> and I've never gone into a voting booth in my life and voted for a Republican. Mm. All right? I have. Mm -hmm. You have? I've when? In 2020, unfortunately. Who did you vote for? The person for? I voted for turned into a crybaby when he lost the presidential election. He well, voted for Trump. Well, let me ask you this, though, and I, we're not going to do a pile on here. Okay. <laughs> well, we've gone through this before, well, but go ahead and ask the question. Well, why did you vote for Trump? Why did you see uh, him as an ex acceptable over, say, even Hillary Clinton, who was a very experienced person? Yeah, well, well I Hillary mean, no, it was, it, was, it was Biden in 2020, excuse me. Right, it was Biden. Right. Over so, Biden, who, again, was a very experienced Biden, person. Biden, I didn't think, would make a good president. And we knew what Trump was about. I didn't like a lot of the stuff that Trump, or most of the stuff that Trump was about. But we knew what he was about, and I didn't think Biden would do very well. Why, so did, why didn't you think Biden would do well? I'm just watching some of the stuff, you know, his campaign ads and stumbling around for words. And I, you know, I hate to say, you know, that he's too old for the job because I don't think that. But I'm just in 2020, Trump had his shit together when he talked to the media better than Biden. And what do you mean? You just know, so right, I, he, I, he just read a teleprompter and read it badly. I, I, yeah, that doesn't matter to me. I, no, I, I just, you know, I just don't, uh, you know, I, for, for instance, when you look at Biden, you can say whatever you wanted to that way, but he was far more experienced and ready yeah, for the well, job. I would, I would never do that again. Uh, you know, you're entitled to one mistake in your life. That was my one mistake. Yeah, yeah. Voting for Trump. Yeah, I would say, so. you know, and I probably, I don't know, I, I probably made a mistake. I don't remember when exactly, but. You know, where I went with the Democrat just because I was a Democrat, you know. And, uh, hell, if I was living in Connecticut, I would vote for Joe Lieberman, right? Because I'm a Democrat. Right, right. And Joe Lieberman mm -hmm. won, wasn't any, any picnic, you know. So then... Who, then and that's a, the problem with a lot of presidential elections. It's the better of two evils. Whichever you see mm -hmm. is the better is who you usually vote for. Yeah, but I, I just don't... Th I think we should be handed better choices, you know? We don't I, have... To begin with, you know, it's a big lie when you say that, oh, gee, anybody can run for president. Third-party candidates never have a shot in this country. Never. They don't come close. It'll all, for, last I think one Ross they, Perot had the best shot. No, the one who was, had the best shot in, our, in, in, in la the last century was Teddy Roosevelt when he ran under the Bull Moose Party the second yeah. time. Uh, I wasn't around he, then. You know, he was far more, had the ability to win that election than anybody. But basically, third parties never have a shot, you know? And uh, they're always looked upon as, uh, you know, so what? In fact, they just had the what, the no, uh, what was the, the, the name of the party that came up this year, the no something party, the no labels? No, no label? No labels. Yeah, no labels party, and they decided they got enough. I think they got enough uh, uh, signatures and stuff to be on the ballot in every state. And then they went out to go look for a candidate. They couldn't find an acceptable candidate. So what does that say about a third party? You know, I mean, they didn't want to just run anybody for laughs. 
you know, they wanted to run somebody decent. Maybe we'll get lucky and Trump will take the third party candidate as his running mate. <laughs> well, maybe we'll get lucky uh, and, uh, and, and Trump will be in jail by the time he gets elected. <laughs> you know. Or, or worse. You know. Um, well, I mean, we, Monday, big day, you know, MSNBC's creaming their jeans on this one, boy. They can hardly <laughs> wait for Monday. It's only going to be jury. Uh, oh, jury. God, I thought he was actually going to do a debate. Yeah. No, it's, it's the trial begins. The Stormy Daniels. Right, right. Okay, right. I got lost. Yeah, I didn't screw a porn star. When you star. get to my age, you get lost a lot. <laughs> Talk about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, but I mean, uh, you know, it's going to be the, uh, it's going to be the, the, it, you, you thought that OJ's was the trial of the century. Forget it. This is going to be the trial of the century. Are they doing cameras? Hmm? Are they doing cameras? Uh, I believe that? yes. Oh, I then it will be. They can do cameras in New York if the judge allows it. Okay. Uh, in the case of, uh, the, um, the trial on uh, his other trial here in New York, uh, the judge, my judge. Uh, Can you text your judge and ask him to put cameras in there, please? <laughs> well, didn't want uh, cameras in there. And I don't know that I want cameras in there. And I'll tell you why. Because who uses those cameras the most? You know, he's going to put on the Trump show rather than let a, uh, you know an actual uh, uh, trial take place. I mean, it's going to be bad enough with that if they don't have cameras mm -hmm. they have cameras you know what he's going to do yeah. right you know um and he says he wants to testify in this trial i su ah. i'd suggest he'd not try being you know, you know you know he's a fool to get up there and testify because he's gonna try and make a mockery of the court mm -hmm. and that's not gonna work well for him it didn't work very well for him the first time or the second yeah and, uh, you know, if he's got a good attorney, the attorney would advise him not to get up on the stand. Uh, 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 yeah, but he wouldn't listen to his attorney. Are you kidding me? No, I know. Me? I think he's you're right. I saw the news where he said he's going to testify, but I, I think if he had a good attorney and if he listened to him, he would. I don't uh, think this is the kind of trial you want to testify in. No, definitely you know, not. I, even if I was in it, it, it was my trial. I wouldn't want to test it. No, I'd want my lawyers to, to work out the deal. And to bring in people to refute all the other people and yeah. so on and Absolutely. so forth. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're talking good lawyering here, and you know what good lawyering costs? A fortune. And right. and and uh, Donald Trump does not want to play a, pay a fortune to lawyers anymore. And there are lawyers that will not work for him because they know they're not going to get paid. I don't think he's even paying minimum wage in New York to his lawyers. Right, right. Well, there's some of these lawyers, like a couple of these women that went gone up uh, in the last couple of times uh, when he was there, that love kind of getting the publicity because they're not big deal lawyers, and uh, they uh, they they want to work for him just to get the publicity. Am I right about that, Josh? You, you know. Is it good publicity? Yeah, I'm not really sure. He's, he's had so many different people, and most of the people that he's had are very fringe uh, people within their industry, you know, that I don't really think are that sought after by a lot of people. Not, not all of them. I mean, I think, you know, he's probably had a couple who were perfectly competent, but a lot of the people that he's had is... Well, do you think that he... he... Yeah, so they probably are seeking, you know, their own bit of uh, recognition there, yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah. I mean, I, I don't have any idea, but I would assume their attitude is, you know, if he's going to use me, I'm going to let him think he's using me while I'm using him or something along those lines. <laughs> you know, which is, makes for a great relationship, right? You know, all the way around. I mean, how how could this possibly not succeed, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But... <laughs> Whatever. I mean, it's like a spy movie or whatever, you know, who can outfuck whom the most or what. I mean, it's just, it's, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, well, you know, he, he's making a big deal out. I can't, uh, can't be held back here because I'm running for president and I need to go out and campaign. But yeah. he's not, yeah. technically, he's not running for president yet. Yeah. Not until mm. he's nominated. It doesn't even matter if he is. I mean, it, it, it's just, I mean, you know, criminal trials are not postponed because you're 
busy at work. I mean, they're just not, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's I'm a drug kingpin. I've got a drug business to run here. I don't have time to be put on trial for selling drugs. I've got drugs to sell. I'm going to lose business you know? if I right. have to I mean, go. you know, it. it's just... You know, it's hard to launder money when I have to be in court all day. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I, could you at least let me have my laptop and Wi-Fi or something? I mean, you know, it's, I mean, yeah. these are such nonsense arguments that I can't believe anybody in America is so stupid as to even entertain them. But yet I can believe it because there are people in this country that are actually that stupid. Well, I, I just don't understand anybody who... You know, to begin with, I don't understand the Baptist, for instance, or Baptist Convention, or what do they call it? You know, mm. those people, the uh, being for Trump. I just right. don't understand it. I mean, this is a guy who's on trial now for having sex with a porn star and trying to cover it up. Yeah. You know, um, and yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, if if this trial were taking place in 1991 and the defendant were Bill Clinton. I mean, this would just be... Now, you know, we were talking last night about Karen McDougal. You know. Mm. We were talking about Karen McDougal, <laughs> who was the better looking of the two, uh, who had sex with Donald Trump. But this isn't part of this case, I don't believe, if I'm not mistaken. And it should be, because Stormy Daniels was only worth $130,000, Karen McDougal was worth one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know what they did with with Stormy Daniels though? They had her sign the the non disclosure agreement. You know, the fact that she wouldn't talk about it. All right. Mm -hmm. The gag order, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. and uh, that was a you know. That was fine. She he, he did had her they had her sign that, but the deal was she wasn't going to get the money until after the election. Right. Yeah. Because they felt that if if she got the money and then she talked, even if she could be held, uh, you know, against right. their agreement, mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is that it would hurt the election. The other way around, she wouldn't get paid until after that, and uh, if she were to blow the whistle on him after that point, they didn't care. Because he'd be elected already. Well, I'm sure the plan was if he didn't get elected, the plan was to just not pay her. Yeah. Because the, then who cares if she says anything? Well, really no, but apparently that was the way they did it, and they right. did pay her, mm -hmm. or at least uh, Michael Cohen was wrote her a check yeah. on his own account, hoping right. he'd get, uh, you know... Well, uh, right, that was the plan, was... Write her a check from your personal money. Yeah. No one will look for that. And then I will pay you back. But on the invoice, you just say it's for legal fees. You know, it's time spent as my lawyer. Well, they so have, no one will be the wiser except, you know. Yeah, they have a tape work. that they're, they're, tape they're going to put in the, in the, at the trial. They're going to let the jury hear in which um, Trump uh, asks about, I think it's about the Stormy Daniels case to Cohen. Who's the other voice on the tape, and uh, and uh, he it, it, they talk about what to do and and paying her and not paying her and whatever, and uh, he said, well, what if we um, what, what, what do we write her a check or do we pay her cash? Mm -hmm. And Trump says, I think we should pay her cash, and I think it was it was Michael, what's his name, uh, mm -hmm. Cohen that said, no, absolutely not. Either that or it was the other way around. But he was very aware of what was going on. He was aware that they were paying her to shut up. Yeah, he knew it was illegal. He's a lawyer. Yeah. As soon as the idea was taken to any lawyer, you know, the, the lawyer's job isn't to call and turn you in. The lawyer's job is to say, I can't do that. I'm your attorney. That's against the law. Mm -hmm. I can't be party to that. And we can't discuss this any further ever again. Now, are you ready for this? If you think about it. This case goes back to something he did eight years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's a you know that's a long, that's a long time ago, right? Not in dog years, but in, you know, <laughs> in human years. I mean, it's it's just it's amazing. It's an amazing uh, 
But what's most amazing to me is that all of this has not hurt him in the eyes of the public. That there's still... Well, I think maybe it has in the yeah. overall eyes of the public, but it really hasn't within his dedicated base. But people. do you think we're doing bad polling on this thing? I mean, how come Biden is running behind Trump? Well, I don't know. And, and, and honestly, the last few weeks, polls indicate that Biden is not running behind Trump. I mean, the last five or six polls that have been released in the last two or three weeks have indicated that it's that Biden is slowly uh, leading and, and slowly gaining in that you know department. I mean, the last poll that just came out maybe two or three days ago of uh, uh, the mega poll that came out, I'm trying to think. Uh, who did it and sorry I can't remember but you know they discussed it on Morning Joe for you know pretty much the whole first hour mm -hmm. has you know got Biden you know nationally at like a four and a half four to five point lead um, and but most critically when you break it down in several of the key states has got him you know into into the five four or five and six point range mm -hmm. and this time a year ago or even six months ago he was trailing by five. Uh, so, you know, he's made up, you know, eight to 12 points uh, in this period of time, you know. And those same polls indicate that about 10 percent or somewhere in that range of Republicans have said if he gets convicted of a crime, that would change my vote. I can't vote for someone who's been convicted of a crime. He hasn't been convicted of one yet, but if I go to the polls on polling, you know, on election day and he's on the ballot and he's a convicted felon, I can't do that. So it's not a high percent, but as we just discussed again, in a state like PA or Michigan or or you That's know, exactly. Georgia, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if just 1 in 10 Republicans do not change do change their mind, that is massive. Yeah. You no. Know? In an election that'll be decided in the one percent, you know, in some of those, you know, I mean, that's massive, you know. See, I, 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 w I wish that I were uh, like Charlie. I wish I were in Texas. Well, not really, uh, but uh, 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 I, I, the reason I wish I were in Texas is that I would really be eager to vote. Here in New York, guess who's going to take this state? <laughs> okay. What, R RFK Jr.? I doubt it. You know, um, uh, Donald Trump? This state hates Donald Trump. Who knows him better than people who live in New York City, for crying out loud? We've had to put up with his antics for, you know, forever and ever. Uh, by the way, we're watching this show, uh, I don't know if you saw it, called Inventing Anna, about this woman that conned a lot of people here in New York City. Um, it, it just got, you got skated along on just conning everybody. But um, we're watching things nine episodes long. I, I at least once an episode, there's a put down of Donald Trump. <laughs> it's like Shonda Rhimes says, "I've got a little little a little uh, bully pulpit here. I'm going to use it." You know. Uh, so there was one joke after another about uh, Donald Trump in it, but. You know, this guy, in any other world, in any other country, would be considered a joke. Mm -hmm. And how anybody can seriously, they can take this guy seriously, is beyond me. You know, and I know we have a lot of idiots in this country, but I didn't think they were that bad. But the fact that this guy has a chance of winning the presidency again, however slim you want to make it, but the fact that he does have a chance... That the mm -hmm. Republican Party is going to nominate him. Okay, that's enough. Mm -hmm. You know, when they've got a lot of other choices, but they're not doing anything about it. You know, so. Hey, let's run Ted Cruz for president. Yeah. Oh, let's not. <laughs> let's get him out of Texas anyway. But yeah, yeah, right. Um, isn't what's his name going to run again down there for senator? Um, you mean governor? Is he running? You, oh, no, no, who's running against him is Colin Allred. Yeah. But who, I, who's a, a congressman. Oh, really? Okay. But who mm -hmm. am I thinking about? The, the guy who... 
Beto O'Rourke. Is Beto O'Rourke. Like Isn't he running for something down there again or planning to? Not this time. Or not, you think he's given up? No, he's got a whole organization. You know, is everything... Bill Maher last like, two weeks ago, right? He, yeah, and I <laughs> found him. I, I found him very acceptable. Yeah, you know? well, he was very acceptable when he ran against Cruz, and the Texans still wouldn't vote for him. Well, yeah, yeah. Listen, I you know I used to live in Texas. I know what that state's about, you know, yeah. and it's it's about three weeks from Tuesday, you know. Oh, here yeah. comes here comes a uh, uh, Bree. Okay, in the last ah. last. 15 minutes of the show uh but i mean it's it's just it's going to be interesting to see what happens here but uh i don't understand it i mean i don't understand the republicans they got a death wish here you know i mean come on there's a good chance if they lose if he if, if trump loses the democrat the republican party's finished it's absolutely finished in this country People, well, it I mean, it it, it would no, have more not. credibility if they just hadn't spent the last few decades, you know, touting their morality records. Basically, I mean, again, you know, if they hadn't said some of the things about, you know, Bill Clinton and and others that that were said about what it takes to be a, a leader in government and the president. That would be one thing, but they did say those things, you know, um, um, and they did preach those things, and they did make that a very important, uh, really a bedrock, you know, pillar of their platform for the last few decades, Ooh. and here they are with this person as, uh, you know, they're yeah. not... Alex, that's like you saying, wait a minute, you know, you're, vanilla you're, coke you're, wait, wait, wait a minute, hold on a second, is, hold on a second. Right? Your mic is way too loud. Yeah, way too loud. It's really no. too loud. Yeah. I have no ability yeah. to adjust. Then talk softly. I will talk softly. Okay. You're you're you forgetting. In America we have Coke and Pepsi. That's it. And you're saying like one one product of Pepsi. Oh wait a minute. Out. We have knee high for crying out loud and Royal <laughs> Crown. Jeez almighty, what are you talking about? Uh, what I'm saying, our system is the system. And by the way, have you looked at the Supreme Court lately? You know, parties, parties be damned. Doesn't matter in that sense. What, what do you sure, mean? Matt, if Hillary had gotten in, we'd still have Roe v. Wade. No, what I'm, yeah, what I'm saying is, you're saying the Republican Party is finished. The Supreme Court's not going to be finished for a lifetime. They've got that set. They, they control that for the for the foreseeable future. And if you look at state governments, the Republicans have been slowly but surely, inch by inch, taking over most state governments. Mm. And and so, no, the Republican Party is not going away because of Trump. And what you're talking about is sort of the media hype, the talk show, radio people. That's not the... No, 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 no. This is, I'm talking purely from a, a, a the basis of if they put, if Donald Trump loses, they will be looked at as the loser party, and they're going to have to recreate themselves and change their entire mm -hmm. image from what it has been because they've allowed Donald Trump to dictate what the image of that party is, and he is dictating it right now. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's a stink that won't wash off that easily, you know. Oh, I think it will. Yeah. Well, then you have then you have you have no faith in the electoral system in this country. It'll be forgotten immediately. How many of you agree with him on that? Hold on a second. How I agree that it, in four years it won't matter. They'll still have a candidate. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people now are voting against Biden more so than for Trump. Almost, you know, it's like nobody can accept anything but from the. I see, you know, postings that are totally irrelevant, comments on the, the online, and somebody will put, and yeah, and that's Biden's fault too, or something like that. And it's like they have, it's not even relevant or related. And, so there's yeah. just, yeah. Yeah, everything is Biden's fault. I, <laughs> I just think a lot of people can, you know, will sit at home and, I, I don't know, I, I saw poll numbers in swing states, something like six or, or seven or eight states and Trump was winning the, in the polls in seven of them. And it was like, what? You know, so I don't know. 
Yeah. Well, anyway. Biden, Biden could very well lose this. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know that it's going to be that it, it, it's going to be that easy to lose. To begin with, he's got a lot more money than Trump has to campaign with, and uh, that uh, that money does buy Let votes, me, you know. Uh, uh, hey, Alex, do you ever watch? By the Jimmy way, your your phone your phone is just so loud; it's really. Okay, hold on. Let know. me drop this. How about that? Yeah, that's a that lot better. That's better. Yes, yeah, much better. Much better. I can't even now. I can't hear anything. Oh, okay. It's good too. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Here's your bedroom. So, I don't know if you can still hear me. Just Jimmy Cal, Jimmy Fallon, and Jimmy Kimmel. Every night they lead with Trump. It's like Trump, Trump, Trump. He gets so much free advertising. Mm. But I I can't hear you guys anymore. So I'll just say goodbye from Singapore. Thanks, oh, Alex. Okay, great talking Talk to, to you. Next week. Okay, bye bye. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, what an uh, asshole. Yeah. Uh, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he's gone. Well, no. he's Sorry, all... Bree, I'm just joking, Bree. I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. What 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 are you calling for? I'm doing a show right now. Who's calling? Oh, sorry. I'll send you a message. Well, I mean, I'm doing well now I've got you on the air. What's the problem, Amy? Uh might not be an intersection tonight. Computers malfunctioning. Oh, okay. Well, if there isn't, there isn't, okay? Alan's hanging up. Is it call you right now? Yeah, right. yeah. I accidentally <laughs> left my phone in the other room, and Marjorie probably just got woken up too. I don't, why she call me while I'm doing a show? Jeez, and I was gonna call tonight. Huh? <laughs> I was gonna call tonight. I didn't, I didn't know Skype. Was, I didn't know Skype was uh, video stuff. So. Yeah. Well, it isn't video like this. I mean, we don't. She doesn't broadcast it in video. Yeah, yeah. But we. But you see each other, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Um. Anyway, where where was I? Uh, yeah, you know, you, you you don't like what uh, what uh, Bree has to say. He's, no, no, I was he, just joking. Was he's just always joking. a naysayer. You know, it's like <clears throat> you know he uh, oh you know Biden's got a horrible chance here. No, he has as good a chance as Donald Trump. That's for damn sure. You know, it's just a matter of who's going to have the better chance once the election comes out. And who knows? You know, I mean, we've got a lot of wild cards going here. Well, like Bree says, and like you say, right? I mean, Trump has the best advertising, you know. Oh, uh, because all these the idiots, all these morons over at MSNBC, is is an example, did not learn <laughs> from 2016 that they elected this guy president because they couldn't stop talking about him. But like Bree says, it's not even that. You have Jimmy Kimmel. You have all these guys. Any network at, at night time, if you're watching anything, they talk about Trump. Yeah. So. It's, it's not like they it's not like they lead with a joke about Joe Biden. They all try to throw in a joke about about Joe Biden well, and it, and it's that. usually an ageist joke to be exactly. honest with yeah. you. Yeah. You know, but they 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 do try to throw one of those jokes in, but it's later on down the line after they've savaged uh uh Trump. And he's absolutely <clears> right. <throat> They're giving him a lot of publicity. And what what was that what was the award show they just had the that Trump Blasted Jimmy Kimmel, and then Jimmy Kimmel replied. What was the Academy the Awards? Award. It was the Academy, Academy Award. Awards. How much advertising do you need? The Super Bowl next? I mean, it, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Well, I mean, that's the one thing that Trump's been very good at is getting free publicity. And and but these people should say to themselves, you know, what we're going to do here. Our policy is going to be we're going to mention Trump when it's something newsworthy. But we're not yeah. going to mention Trump when it isn't. But they mention Trump every hour of every day and sometimes for the first half hour of their shows. They need it to be a horse race. They don't make any money if it's in blow away. Exactly. But if Charlie mentions him five times, i got to mention him six. You know? Yes. Yeah. I mean, well, we've been talking about him for the last uh, uh, almost hour. Yeah, but nobody listened to this show. So yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, we have uh, we have at least a, a tenth of a thousand of people. Uh, I, I've said this before, but my my friend, uh, I've known him for like fifteen years. He's running in Libertarian Party. Uh, Lars Map said, but you know what's his name? Junior is leading the pack, but um, but he's been campaigning and doing all the straw vote thingies and everything. He's been doing the whole thing. Pretty cool. Yeah, but uh, but RFK Junior is a is a laughable candidate you know 
I mean, um, I wish you had a good third-party candidate. I wish there was somebody that could really make it a horse race. But we don't have that, you know. And I don't know, what would it take to have a third party? Would he have to be liberal or would he have to be conservative or would he have to be right down the middle? I mean, where does he have to place himself? If he goes right down the middle, he'll sound like somebody who doesn't have an opinion about anything. You know, so Ooh. it's 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 a it's a strange world we live in today. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, you just had these elections. People went to conventions. You didn't know who the nominee was going to be until the conventions were over with, mm. and then they came out with their candidates. And then we had three months of uh, of campaigning, and uh, then the election was over with. But we didn't start saying, oh, who do you think is going to win the election th two years beforehand? And I think this year it started three years beforehand. Yeah. I mean, come on. Let us enjoy the president we have for the moment, even if he's one you didn't vote for. So uh, any, any final comments this evening, Josh? Because he's our, you know, our expert. I mean, it, you know, the third party... It I mean, I welcome anybody that wants to run, but, you know, I don't know how successful. I mean, the thing is, for a third party, you would have to get someone that's actually got some ideas and that is willing to say them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is willing to really want to make a challenge, do things differently. And we just don't, you know, we don't have a lot of that because of the, you know, the current party set up and the only people that do have i guess what you would call his own ideas or want to challenge things you get crackpots like rfk jr who's you know whose challenges are, are i mean just unearthly ideas i mean you know just it I mean it's it's stupidity so you know right now i don't see it i mean the no labels thing i mean some of the people they looked at i mean they're not going to appeal to anybody i mean joe manchin isn't going to appeal to anybody like they think he was he's not he's not no. going anywhere that's just someone who all he ever did is bitch and moan every time he didn't get his way, you know. So I mean, yeah, that's it. that's the opposite of what the United States. He is. was just he, annoying. He, he was represent he, the whole country. He, he was just annoying, is what the what right. the situation yeah. was there. You, you know? know, so you know, I don't. It's just not. It's just not there. But I'm not saying I would ever be against it. I mean, again, I think people have the right to run. They don't have well, to attach you know, you go to countries. To party, you go to you know? countries like Italy, and there's sometimes as many as nine people running mm -hmm. for any given office. Uh, yeah, I believe so. You know, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know that much about it, but yeah, I mean, I think people should be allowed to run, and they shouldn't have to attach themselves to a party, right? And you know, they should be able to say what they think, mm -hmm. you know. And but the problem is, it just. But we're not there yet. I mean, you know, the Trump is just the perfect example. I mean, we've gone over it a million times. There are some of the things that these people that defend him say that I know damn good and well, they know is absolutely wrong. And if you really pay attention, you can get admissions or stories here and there where people tell you they go on television and they say these things. And as soon as the camera turns off, they, they look at somebody and they make comments like, I cannot believe that I just had to fucking say that about that prick. <laughs> you know, they can't even stand it. You know, I mean, I listened to a podcast on C-SPAN the other day that talked about Patrick Senator there in Wisconsin. Uh, what's his name? Ron Johnson, who goes on television and says these things about Trump, and then they say when the camera turns off, he he just is like, I, I just lied. I mean, he just tells people, I, I just lied. <laughs> I just lied. You know, I mean, he just he just he knows that he does it, and he doesn't care. Anyway, we've run out of time here, and uh, we've run out of week, actually. Uh, Jeff, thank you for calling us this evening. Thank you to um, our good friend uh, um, uh, uh, Charlie Wallace, uh, Josh Wheeler, always a pleasure. Brian Neary, great to have you here. Say hello to the kids and the wife, or not the wife, the girlfriend. <laughs> My always, roommate. Your roommate, uh. your roommate. And also, uh, thanks to thanks to you, also, uh, Alan W. Thank you for being with us. Uh, and Call Amy, Alan. <laughs> what? I heard what she said, Jeff. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, you're not Jeff tonight. Yeah. I heard what she said. <laughs> right. 
Anyway, everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for this evening. Here, let me put me on now. Okay, thanks to them for being here, and thanks to, uh, and, and to hell with the rest of you who didn't call. Well, you know. Anyway, listen. Uh, um, I don't know if there's going to be Amy next. I, I have no idea, but we'll we'll find out. If you don't hear anything, then there's no Amy. We'll see you again on uh, Monday uh, with the pop-up show. That'll be on Facebook. And then we'll see you right back here on Wednesday, 1030, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.